In this video, we will continue lecture 9 and introduce nasty structure for multidimensional choices. Here is the quick summary about the MNL model. It contains key assumptions and issues. We have already solved the first three issues in the previous lectures. And now we'll go to the last one, extension to the choice combination, where we will introduce the nested structure. The nested structure is applied for the multidimensional choice problem. Uh, in this page, we'll first go to check the notations will be applied for the multidimensional choice. Uh, first, let's consider two choices, C1 and C2. Uh, then the complete combination of choices will be C1 times C2. Uh, if we consider an uh, individual N, and uh, the, there will be a subset of choices which are not available for the individual N, that is a CN star. Then the uh, combination of the choices available for the individual N would be defined as CN, that is a C1 times C2 minus CN star. We can go to check the definitions through a uh, simple example, the mode destination combination choice. Assume that we have a set of mode available for all individuals, which would be capital M, and also a set of destinations that is a capital D. Uh, then M times D would be the complete mode destination combinations available for all the individuals. Also, we assume that for the individual N, the mode one is not available. Then the uh, combination set could be defined in this equation. Uh, with those assumptions, we can find out the uh, CN, which would be the available choices for the individual N. It would be the uh, complete combinations M times D minus CN star. That won't give you Continuing the mode destination combination choice example, we define CN as the set of all mode destination combinations available for the individual N, and the probability of DM would be uh, the probability of selecting the mode destination combination uh, for the specific destination D and the mode M. We also define the utility of the mode destination combination DM uh, from our previous uh, MNL model, we can actually define the uh, utility as the determinist component and the random component. Here, uh, VDN is the deterministic component or utility of the destination D, and uh, VM is the deterministic component of the mode M, and uh, VDM is the deterministic component for the combination of D and M. Here we can see that the first three deterministic components will be the observed attributes and it's actually the shared observed attributes. For example, if we consider two combinations dm prime and dm double prime, then both of them will share the deterministic component uh, vd. Uh, in addition, they don't share the random components. The, uh, for the random components, Kasai dm prime and the Kasai dm double prime are different. Also similar to MNL model, the random term Kasai dm is assumed to be in the standard gamma distribution. And then the probability of taking the combination of d and m would be uh, defined as the expression here which could be uh, derived from the MNL model. Uh, note that here and in the following, we will use notation for dummy summation indexes.
Now let's see how we can get the marginal choice probability. Uh, first, we want to get the marginal probability for the destination, that is the probability of taking the destination D. Uh, from the definition of the joint probability, we can find that the marginal probability can be the uh, summation of the probability of dm applied for all the modes which will be available for the destination d and here md is defined as a set of all modes available for the individual to assess to the destination d uh, we can see one simple example to check how the uh, set md is defined first let's suppose that there are three different transporting modes, M1, M2, M3, and uh, four destinations, D1 to D4. Uh, M times D will give you the complete mode destination combinations. And we say that uh, for the CN star, we will have uh, five different combinations which are not available for the individual N. Then we can get the uh, CN, that will be the available combinations for the individual N. It comes from M times D minus CN star. Now, with these uh, assumptions, we can find out MD values for M1, which would be the uh, set of the mode available for the destination D1. Here we can see that there is only one mode available for the individual to reach the destination D1, that is M3. And then for MD2, we will have two modes, M2 and M3. For M for D3, it will be M1 and M3. And for D4, it will be M1 and M3. So that's the way for us to define MD as the set of all modes available for individual and to assess the destination D. With the definition of MD and the joint probability of taking the destination D and the mode M, we can quickly derive the marginal choice probability. The page here shows the details about the derivation. Uh, going through the derivation step by step, you will get the expression of the marginal probability as shown in the equation here. The expression of the marginal choice probability here is very complicated. So in order to simplify the formula, we define new term v tilde dn as log summation exponential vm plus vdm. With this new term, we can try to simplify the uh, marginal probability. And uh, now the probability becomes exponential of vd plus v tilde d over the summation of exponential vd prime plus v tilde d prime. Uh, we call the ter new term v tilde d as a log sum term, and it will be widely applied in the following analysis. Now let's see how we can interpret the log sum term in the nested model. Uh, first, let's consider some general case. Assume that uh, the choice among the set of alternative A and uh, uh, for the chosen alternative the utility will be the maximum one from all the choices that is u star equal to the maximum of uk and uh, then we can find out the probability distribution function for u star as capital fx that is the probability of u star smaller than x uh, it will also equal to the probability of uk smaller than x for all the alternatives in the set A. Um, we also define that the utility contains in the deterministic term vk and a random term psi k. 
and uh, for the random term they are actually independent to each other so we can rewrite the uh, probability distribution as the product of the probability psi k smaller x minus vk In the MNL model, we assume that the random term psi k uh, follows in a standard gamma distribution with alpha equal to 0 and mu equal to 1. Then we can write down the expression about the uh, probability of psi k smaller than x minus vk and apply this one in the uh, probability of u star smaller than x. Uh, we further derive this expression and we find out that the uh, probability of u star smaller than x could be written into the format of exponential minus exponential minus x times the summation of exponential vk and the term here is actually could be written into a expression about the log sum term um, then we can actually rewrite the uh, expression of u star smaller than x in the equation here and uh, if we recall the definition of the gamma distribution we can find that the uh, distribution of u star is just the one gamma distribution with eta equal to the log sum term and mu equal to one uh, for the gamma distribution with eta and mu the mean value is eta plus gamma over mu then for the uh, u star we can find that the expected value of u star is the log sum term plus gamma uh, with this information we can summarize that the log sum term is the measure of the expected utility derived from the choice problem involving the alternative k in the uh, choice set Back to the uh, nested model, we can see that the log sum term here is the measure of the expected utility derived from the choice problem involving alternative modes that can be used to assess the destination D. There's another method to derive the marginal choice probabilities. In this method, the fourth and sixth properties of gamma distribution are applied. The details of these two properties are shown in lecture 8. Uh, the next three pages will show the details about the derivation. Uh, I will not go through the uh, details in the video. You can try to find out more information from the PowerPoint slides. Now we're going to apply the property 6 and the property 4 with this derivative. Eventually you will find out the same expression to the first method and it also contains the log sum term for the destination d. Uh, similarly, we can find out the marginal choice probability for the mode m. And in this expression, the log sum term will represent the utility with respect to all the destinations assessed by the mode m. The next concept we're going to introduce is the conditional choice probability. In order to define this probability, we apply the Bayes theorem. For the probability mm -hmm. of the mode m given the destination d, it's defined as the probability of d and m over the probability of d. Similarly, we can define the probability of d given m. 
Let's see how we can find out the expression or the probability d given m. Uh, in this expression, the component on the top is just the joint probability or d and m, which is defined by the MNL model. And the component at the bottom is the marginal probability of the mode m. In this probability, we have the log sum term. Then we can apply these two expressions in the conditional probability and further expand the expression. Um, with this expanded expression of the conditional probability, we will further simplify it by applying the definition of the log sum term. First, we will make a small modification about the first component in this expression. Then we will recall the definition of the log sum term. And with that definition, we can further expand the expression. And with this expanded one, we can find that the, those components could be eliminated from the expression. And you Eventually, the conditional probability of d given m can be uh, simplified and it's only related to the deterministic utility of destination d and a combination of d and m. Similarly, we can extend this expression for the conditional probability of m given d. Uh, for this probability, we just need to switch the index of d and m from the first equation. Now we can summarize what we got from the previous analysis. And this one shows the joint probability for the destination D and the mode M. We also have the marginal probabilities for the destination D and uh, the mode M. Additionally, we get the conditional probability for D given M and M given D. The previous analysis is based on the shared observed attribute applied for the Nancy logic model. But in reality, the model also contains some shared unobserved attributes. Uh, for the rest of the lecture, we're going to go through the uh, next logic model with the shared unobserved attributes. Similarly, we'll consider the mode destination combination choice example. Uh, we define CN as a set of the uh, mode destination combinations available for the individual N. Also, we have the probability of selecting the mode destination combination D and M. Uh, we also define the utility for taking the mode destination combination. Uh, different from the previous analysis, um, the utility is defined as three deterministic components and three random components. Here, Kasai M and Kasai D are applied for the mode M and the destination D. And we call that they are the uh, shared unobserved attributes. Uh, for it, this is actually comes from an example. For example, if we are talking about two combinations, D M prime and D M double prime, then both of them contain the deterministic utility VDN and the random term psi D. Um, and uh, this is the way for us to define the shared unobserved attribute. Uh, in the analysis, uh, without loss of the generality, we actually can assume that either psi d or psi m be zero. Then we can eliminate one random term from the definition of the utility. For the next logic model with a shared unobserved attribute, we also want to find out the marginal, conditional, and joint choice probabilities. Here we will first try to find out the marginal probability, and this expression shows the probability of choosing the destination D. The derivation for the marginal probability is very complicated. The cost notes contains the detailed derivation step by step. So in the video lecture here, we will skip the detailed process. And you can go back to check the details in the course notes. Um, we will just uh, jump to the final expression directly.
basically in the derivation you need to call the fourth and sixth properties of gumball distribution Finally, we can derive to the equation for the marginal choice probability, which can be applied for the next logic model with a shared unobserved attributes. In this expression, it also contains a log sum term, but this one is different from the log sum term we defined previously. In addition, in this expression, there are two additional parameters, mu d and mu d m. And these two parameters has to be calibrated for us to implement the Nasty Logic model. To get the conditional probability, we have to recall the assumption that either cosine m or cosine d is zero. Here we assume that cosine m is zero, and then we can apply the definition of the utility dm uh, to find out the expression of the conditional probability. Uh, uh, for example, here we will try to derive the conditional probability of m given the destination d with the uh, derivations in these uh, steps. We can find that the conditional probability of m given d is shown in this equation. Uh, it could be also applied for the conditional probability of d given m by just the switching the index of m and d in this equation. With the conditional and the marginal probabilities, it will be very easy for us to find out the joint probability by applying the base theorem. Uh, the joint probability will be the product of the conditional probability and the marginal probability. And we can find out the um, joint probability as shown in this equation. Now let's learn the nesting structure rules applied for the nested logic model. And this rule is applied for you to calibrate the parameters applied for the nested logic model and also estimate the log sum terms in the probability. Uh, still, we are considering the uh, two dimensional combinations, mode and destination. Uh, we assume that the random term for the mode is zero then the utility is just the uh, summation of three deterministic term and two random terms. Uh, in the nesting structure, we are considering two levels. The upper level only consists of the destinations, and the lower level only consists of the transporting mode. Um, so for the uh, level two, we only have the random term for the destination, level one, it contains the uh, random term for the combination of the destination and the mode. Uh, also, the rule we have here is like the error terms at any level does not involve aspects of low levels. The structure can also be extended to higher dimensions. For example, if we are considering three-dimensional combinations, mode, destination, and routes, which we specify as a DMR, then we can consider uh, three levels. 
uh, one example of this structure is uh, uh, we set uh, the top level as the destination, low as the mode, and the lowest one as the routes. So we have the three levels. In level three, we only consider the random term for the destination. Level two, we only consider the combination of destination and mode. And level one, we are considering the combination of the destination mode and the routes. Similarly, we have the same rule. The error terms at any level does not involve aspects of low levels. Uh, with this kind of definition, we can actually uh, specify that Ksi M, Ksi R, Ksi DR, and Ksi MR are all zeros, and then we can write down the expression of the utility. We also can have another structure. We can actually put uh, the mode on the top, destination in the middle, and then the route at the lowest level. Then for this kind of structure, at the level three, we will have a uh, Ksi M, but we assume that the Ksi D and the Ksi R are all zero. And level two, we only have the combination of D and M. And similarly for level one, uh, we have Ksi DMR. Uh, also, the error terms at any level does not involve the aspect of the lower levels. Uh, in this kind of structure, we should assume that Ksi D, Ksi R, Ksi DR, and Ksi MR are all zero. And we can then write down the expression of the utility for D, M, and R combination. If the Nasty Logic model is extended to higher dimensions, we can also try to find out the uh, marginal, conditional, and joint probabilities. Uh, let's take a look at the three-dimensional case. And this is the uh, nesting structure we specified. Um, and also we define the utility for each DMR combination. Uh, in this kind of definition, we will have the uh, assumptions about the random term. Uh, Ksi D is a gamma distribution with the parameter of zero and mu D. Uh, Ksi DM is zero and mu M. And Ksi DMR is zero and mu R. And then we are able to apply the base theorem to define the joint probability as the probability of R given DM times the probability of M given D and the probability of D. So the first two terms here are the conditional probability. And then we can see how we can derive the uh, conditional probability. Uh, first, uh, for the probability of R given DM, uh, based on the definition of the utility and the assumptions of the random terms, we can quickly derive the uh, conditional probability, which you are showing in this expression. In addition, we are able to go to check the conditional probability of M given D. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but still, we can call the properties of the gamma distribution, especially the fourth and sixth properties. And uh, we can do the further derivations about the conditional probability. Uh, eventually, we then we are able to find out the closed form expression of the conditional probability of M given the destination D. And it also contains a log sum term VDM prime. Uh, this term will be related to the mode, destination, and the route. So that will be all about the nested logic model.
In the next video, we are going to check the estimation of the nested logic model.